So torsional elements are, are basically used for transmitting powers from point to another point. Like consider a vehicle, the power is generated in engine and we want to transmit that into the wheels on the back. We generally use torsional elements like the shafts or gears. The reason of using gears is sometimes we need higher speed or sometimes we need higher force or higher torque. The main reason of using gear systems is gaining more torque or more speed while the total power generated by engine is the same. We sometimes need higher torque. Say when you are going up a hill, you need higher torque, but sometimes you need higher speed. So we use basically different gears to get either higher speed or higher torque. The first parameter that I want to introduce is the gear ratio. The gear ratio is simply defined as the ratio between the radius of gears connected together or the diameter of gears connected together or the number of teeth of the gears connected together. Velocity in two gears together or the twist in two gears together, I can use the gear ratio like this. The twist in gear A is related to the twist in gear B with the gear ratio. Why did I use negative sign here. That is to make the transition compatible because if one gear rotates clockwise, the other gear rotates counterclockwise. So the negative sign is used for that. So similar to the relation between the angle of twist, we can find the relation between velocities. I will define the velocities later on in the, in the, in the next slide. But we know that there will be a relation between the velocities. Yes, sir. Yes, here R stands for radius, D stands for diameter, and N stands for the number of teeth, because it's sometimes easier to count number of teeth instead of determining the diameter. Consider this figure, and consider one gear is larger than the other one. For instance, in this case, the bottom gear, the red one, is larger than the top gear. In this case, the gear ratio will be not equal to 1, so we will see changes when we are moving from one gear to another gear. All right? The first change that we will see will be on the twist, twisting of the gears, or the velocity of the gears. Um, in this case, can you tell me which of these two gears rotates faster? The smaller one rotates faster. When two gears are connected together, the smaller gear can rotates faster. If the friction is zero, the total power will be the same in the left and in the right gear. And it means that when we are gaining speed, we are actually losing something else. And what is that? That will be the torque. So if the power is constant, if we gain higher speed, we are losing torque. Or if we gain torque, we are actually losing speed. So we need to sacrifice one for the other one. Let me introduce first some technical parameters like power, like work, like angular velocities, and this kind of things. So power is defined as the work performed per unit of time. It means that if you do higher work in a constant time, you would have higher power. Or if you have a system which <coughs> is able to do the same amount of work, in less time, the system is more powerful, okay? But how we can define work in torsional elements? In mechanics, work is defined as force times deformation. In torsion, we define that as torque times twist, because force is torque, and deformation that we expect to see in torsional elements is twist, so we can simply write it like this work is equal to t times phi, okay? And power is defined as work per unit of time. Or mathematically, I can write it like this. p is equal to d over dt times work. Here, d over dt means derivative of that parameter with respect to time. So I can simply derive work with respect to time and determine how much is the power, okay? To do that, let me plug work into this equation. 
that gives me d over dt times t phi. Torque would be constant over time. So I will take out t and just drive phi with respect to time. And that would be power is equal to torque times d phi over dt. I simplify this into this equation. Power is torque times angular velocity, or omega. And omega, or angular velocity, is d phi over dt. OK? So angular velocity is simply changes of twist over time or in one unit of time. For power, in SI unit, we use watts. One watt is newton meter over second. On the other side, in the US customer unit, we either use pound feet over second, or we use another unit, which is horsepower. And horsepower is more common in vehicles. So when we want to talk about the power of a vehicle, we usually work with horsepower. One horsepower is about is 550 pound feet over second. What is the unit of twist? Unit for phi is radian. What would be the unit for angular velocity, which is twist per time? That would be radian per second. OK, good. So for angular velocity, the standard unit is radian per second. However, there are two other units which are common. <laughs> One is one hertz. So one full turn in one second is equal to one hertz. How much is one full turn in radian? It's two pi. So one hertz is actually two pi radian per second. OK? The second common unit is RPM. One RPM is one rev per minute. One full turn is two pi. One minute is 60 seconds, so I can use this conversion factor for converting one RPM to radian per second. So for one hertz, I will use two pi as conversion factor, and for RPM, I will use two pi over 60 to convert that into appropriate unit, which is radian per second.